Well, good morning. How about we turn around and shake somebody's hand? Go ahead and introduce yourself to the folks who are around you. Tell them good morning. Say hello. You may know their name. If not, uh, introduce yourself by name to them. I want to say a big word of welcome to uh, all of us who might be joining us for the first day. If today is your first lap around the track joining our family here at Christ the Redeemer, I want to say welcome. Great to have you with us today as uh, we celebrate the birth of John the Baptist. That's what we are celebrating today. And not only do we celebrate the birth of John the Baptist, but we celebrate week three in a series entitled Life Is. So let's catch you up to speed on the series if today's your first day joining us. Two weeks ago, week one, Father Bryce led you in a conversation about the fact that we can learn a lot about life if we pay attention to life during the summer, and there we can discover that life is messy. Amen? Life is messy. My life is messy. Your life is messy. Sometimes the summer reveals that to us. Then last week, again, Father Bryce walked you in through a conversation where you celebrated that if you want to know or discover where life can be messiest, we can look no further than our own family. And we said that our families are messy. And so life is messy, our families are messy, and as we kind of land into week three today, we celebrate the fact that not only are we messy, but our relationship with him is messy. Amen? Now, our relationship with him is messy because we're messy. God's not messy. However, things can get a little complicated um, in our relationship with God and, and how things unfold in our relationship with God. And that's what we're going to celebrate today as we actually kind of put two things together. So first of all, let's tell the story of John the Baptist. It's a really awesome story, not only about him and his birth, but even more importantly, how he was conceived, his mom and his dad. We're going to tell that story. Then what's going to happen is, as we look at the story of John the Baptist, you're going to discover something about your life today and about your relationship with God that I don't think most of us have ever seen. So if today, through the Bible and through what God has already said, if you could learn something about your life and about your relationship with God that you've never seen before, would you be willing to listen for that today? So let's jump right in, all right? So here's a story with John the Baptist. John the Baptist, his mama's name is Elizabeth. His daddy's name is Zechariah. And they live um, in Jerusalem because Zechariah is a priest. And he's not just a priest. He's kind of like an important priest. He's one of the center priests. He's one of the priests who gets to do something really awesome. And he spends a lot of his time not only in Jerusalem, but in the temple. Now, 2,000 years ago, at the time of Jesus, at the time of the birth of John the Baptist, Jerusalem was the center of all of Israel. And it was a center of worship for everybody who's in Israel. And not only is Jerusalem the center, the heart of the faith, but the temple, the big temple, the grand temple, the temple is the heart of of the faith of all of Israel. And inside the temple, inside the heart of the temple, there's a special place where once a day, a priest would go into the temple, inside the heart of the temple, and he would stand behind the altar of incense, and they would have coals lit, and he would put incense on the coals, and the incense would rise to heaven, which represents all of our prayers, what? Rising to heaven, and he would pray on behalf of the people. And so to be picked to be that priest, you might only get picked to be doing that like once in your whole life. So Zechariah, the daddy of John the Baptist, it's the day. This is the day where Zechariah gets to go into the temple, inside the heart of the temple. This is the day. It's like the most sacred place on the earth. It's like punishment, like a cocodrill, something like that, right? <laughs> like, so 
He is in the temple. He's in the center, the heart of the temple, and he's at the altar. Like if this was me, like I'd be kind of freaking out, right? Or I'd be overwhelmed or in awe or all of that. Zechariah, he walks up to the temple. He begins to pray. He puts incense on the altar. God shows up in the form of an angel. And God says to him, you're going to have a son. Now, you might say, that sounds pretty cool. Here's the thing. When God revealed himself, he came in the form of a cell phone. It sounded just like that right there. (laughs) It was really cool. Like, you didn't realize they had cell phones back in the day. It was there, right? It's all part of the story right here, right? Okay, so Zechariah is how old? He's 70. Raise your hand for those of us who are 70 if you want to have another baby. I didn't see any hands go up. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy 20s, much less 70s, right? All right, so Zechariah is 70, his wife is 70, and so God comes to him and says, you're going to have a baby, and Zechariah says, well, in a sense he says, I know you can do that, I just don't know if you will do that. Listen, in a sense, Zachariah says, I know you can do a lot of things. I just don't know if I believe you will do that. This is coming from a priest. This is coming from a holy priest. This is coming from the priest that was in the temple, in the heart of the temple, doing the thing that every priest would want to do. He stands before God, and he says, I know you can, I just don't know if you will. And so God takes his voice away. He can't talk until... The gospel today, when they ask him, what's the name of your son? He says, you're going to name him John. And then that's when his, it says in the gospel today, his tongue was freed, his mouth was freed, and he could speak, right? That's what's happening in the gospel. And so what we see in Zechariah is that even Zechariah, his relationship with God is messy. Amen? Now, you might be saying to yourself, Father Mark, I don't want another baby. That's okay. You might be saying to yourself, Father Mark, I'm not 70, and that's okay too. And you might be saying to yourself, Father Mark, I haven't heard angels speak to me, and that's okay. But your life is messy. Amen? And your family is messy. Amen? And last week we said, catch this, remember, let's put our hats back on. Last week we said that the enemy cloaks his lies in 90% truths. So this is what happens in life. My life is messy, your life is messy. When life is messy, we look for God to find God in the midst of the messy. But for most of us, if we are honest, we often do not Hear God in the midst of the mess. A lot of people don't see God in the midst of the mess. So the enemy says, your life is a mess. And you can't hear God in the mess. And you're alone. Now, the enemy cloaks his lies in 90% truths. 90% of what I just said was true, right? Your life is a mess. You can't hear God in the mess. Right there at the end, that little last piece, the last 10% is 100% wrong when the enemy whispers to us, you're alone. But here's the thing. 
from most of us. We know God can work miracles, but if we're all going to be honest, I think a lot of us doubt whether he will. I'll tell you a story. Some of you have heard this story before. Uh, my sister, Diana, she is number six. I'm number five, six kids in the family. I am supposed to be the baby of the family, all right? <laughs> and then there was a hurricane or something. I have no idea what happened, but my mom and dad had another baby, right? And, uh, and she stole my rightful place as the baby of the family. And that was okay because she produced three beautiful children. Now, I love all my nieces and nephews. In fact, this homily is being recorded. So let me just say for the whole world, I love all my nieces and nephews, right? Because they're all going to listen to the homily and complain that I talked about Diana's babies. <laughs> but anyway, um, when Di- uh, Diana and Brent were living at home, I, I was really uh, growing attached to her three kids. Alice, she's a princess, and uh, she just has a special place in my heart. And she has twin boys, and they are, they're either hell on wheels or angels or somehow in between. I have no idea how to, but they, they just, those three kids, well, those are the kids that I'll never biologically bring into the world. I love them, and they're kind of like mine. And when they were in Homa, I was really close to them. And then, because life is messy, families are messy, the word divorce kind of got thrown in the mix there. Now, let me just hit pause for a second because I know that every time I talk about the word divorce, that hits a lot of us close to home and, hey, I love you. You, you, Your life is messy. And we're all messy, so get used to it. We're all messy, okay? So... If you were divorced, if you're going through a divorce, if you are remarried, that's okay. We're all in this together. Just listen to the story, okay? So we're in this together. Um, so Diana, she starts talking about divorce, and Brent's talking about divorce, and I am panicking because of those kids. And I say to him, I know you can, and you better. Like, just to be honest with you, you better do something because I love those babies and I love my sister and I love Brent. You better do something. Now, go do it. And I'm going to wait over here and pout until you go do what you got to do. I'll take care of my life, right? And nothing happened. Months went by, more months went by, and it did not appear to me that he was doing anything. And I began to think, kind of like Zachariah, I know you can, but I doubt that you will. Let me say that, I'm sitting here waiting because this is really personal in my life, and I know he can, brother, led people through the Red Sea. He took Lazarus from the dead. He rose from the dead himself. He beat death. He's up in heaven. He can do anything in the world, can he, right? So like something like my sister and her husband doesn't seem like it's, it's a big deal. And I began to think, I know you can. I just don't think you will. And then all of a sudden, something happened. This stuff in me, that I never saw came to the surface. Amen. See, that's what it sounded like right there, right? (laughs) It sounds like resentment. It sounds like anger. It sounds like fear. And while I was waiting, God was pulling all this stuff out of my heart. Here's, everybody look at me. His silence is like a magnet. 
Listen, his silence, when he doesn't say anything, when he doesn't look like he's doing anything, his silence is like a magnet. And it finds things in our heart. Now watch the image. And the further that he gets away, what rises to the surface is all these things like resentment, fear, and control that was buried in my heart. And I wanted him to do this, and he's like, uh-uh. I want the resentment, the fear, the anger. So if this is God, and he's, he's like a magnet, the further he got away, what began to rise to the surface was the things that I was blind to. And that's messy, isn't it? All the time that he was silent in Zachariah's life, he was pulling out of Zachariah's heart all these things that were leading Zachariah to believe that he can, but he won't. And what's going to happen in our lives is this. Your life is going to get messy, or it is messy now. Your families are going to get messy, or they're messy now. And this is what will happen. You will be tempted to believe that God can work a miracle, but he won't. Now, right there, underneath all that are emotions or thoughts or beliefs. Mine was resentment, fear, and anger. Yours might be other things. And what's going to happen is this. That's where it's going to get messy. That's why our relationship with God is messy, because the things inside our heart are messy. And what God will do is... The further he gets away, he's going to pull all those things out so that we can see him. Now, right there, you have a choice. We can either try to manage all those things, my resentment, fear, and anger, all by myself, or I could take that to him. Twenty-four hours before the divorce was going to be final, he came through. Don and Brent are not divorced. They are in Houston now, flourishing, thriving as a married couple, doing better than they ever have. He came through. John the Baptist was born, and he baptized the author of baptism. Because God came through in his promise. And I bet by this stage of the homily, you are already thinking inside your head or your heart of a place in your life where it's messy. And maybe you believe that God's not going to come through. And right there, Underneath all that is what God wants you to bring to him today. Amen? Amen. Zechariah stood behind an altar on behalf of the people, and he lifted up prayers. Today, Another priest is going to stand behind an altar and lift up things so that your prayer can rise to heaven. As we offer this Mass, let's put our hearts on the altar, especially where it's messy and especially if we believe that God can but won't work a miracle in our life. Amen.